Hello and welcome to Aspen Affairs, the public affairs show from the Aspen Chamber Resort Association. I'm your host, Debbie Braun, President and CEO of the Aspen Chamber. You're watching Election 2024, Informed and Empowered, our series on this fall's election where we highlight voter resources, share key election information, and break down the issues you're going to find on that local ballot. You can learn more and watch all the episodes online at aspenchamber.org slash elections. I got good guests today, everyone. Today's guests are the interim Pitkin County attorney, Ryan, Ryan Neely, and the Pitkin County commissioner, Patty Clapper. Patty also sits on the ACRA board. Um, this coming election, we have two important uh, ballot measures about the airport, but funny enough, they're not about the airport. They're about some kind of thing called the Home Rule Charter. So today, we're going to figure out what the Home Rule Charter is, why these questions are going through the charter, and not just a simple up and down question about the airport. Thanks, you both, for joining us today. I can tell you're excited. Yeah, so excited. This is good here. stuff. Come on. Totally. This is going to be the show of the year. So, right, let's start with you. Can sure. you explain what a home rule charter is and what it means for governance in Pitkin County compared to other counties in Colorado? Is it a good thing, a bad thing, or does it really matter? Well, that was a lot of questions at one time. But you got I'll, it. Uh, I'll start with the last one. It does matter. It does. Um, Pitkin County is unique among counties in Colorado in that we have a home rule charter. There's one other county in Colorado, Weld County, that has oh. a home rule charter. Okay. Um, the Pitkin County Home Rule Charter is a creature of the Colorado Constitution. The Colorado Constitution creates an opportunity for counties to form as home rule counties and essentially uh, what that means is the county has an opportunity, or home rule counties, have an opportunity to have more say in their own governance. Well, that sounds like a good thing. I think it is a good thing. Yeah. The city of Aspen, they also are home rule charter, correct? Correct. So yeah. the city of Aspen is a municipality, and the uh, corollary to the city's opportunity to govern itself as a home rule municipality is Pitkin County's opportunity to do that as a home rule county. Yeah, when the chamber was discussing this ballot initiative, and our board did take um, a resolution of support on uh, 2A? Um, 1C. 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 Um, they are in favor of 1C, but a lot of the conversation began to center around um, People would say a home rule is like a constitution. Would you agree with that? Like, a lot of people don't like fudging around with those types of documents. Sure. Uh, Pitkin County's home rule charter is a little bit like a uh, mini constitution, if you will. Okay. Meaning that it sets out the limitations and the authority of the various aspects of Pitkin County's governance. Uh, it grants the BOCC, I'm sorry, the Board of County Commissioners, which Commissioner Clapper is a member of, uh, with certain authority and limits their authority in other ways. Okay. Um, it creates the structure by which Pitkin County is organized into various departments and um, sets forth various programs that the county has as well. So. Um, how does the Home Rule Charter impact the way local government uh, functions in Pitkin County? And what types of decisions does it allow the county to make independently of state government? Sure. Um, the Home Rule Charter uh, provides additional authority to, in, in our case, I uh, couldn't speak to any other counties, but Pitkin County's Home Rule Charter provides additional authority to the BOCC in a whole myriad of uh, ways, particularly in the realm of spending money and um, managing things on a more local basis. The county's Home Rule Charter gives the BOCC authority over those types of things. So things like land use decisions, um, our budgetary decisions, all the things that you customarily associate with uh, county functions the Home Rule Charter provides additional authority in those areas to the BOCC that may not otherwise be provided by state law. Okay, so really we should not enter into this lightly about changing our charter. 
Um, and I think it's really interesting because question 200 is asking to change the charter and the question the county commissioners have put forth is more of reaffirming of the power that they already have. Is that correct? I think that's a fair way to characterize it. Okay. Um, generally speaking, the, board, the county, Pitkin County, the entity, has control over the various properties that it owns. And the BOCC uh, is vested with uh, managing those properties and has jurisdiction over those properties. And that's all set out in the Home Rule Charter. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I was asking you earlier, and I think it's interesting, like, when was the last time we changed this charter? You sure. know, I have bylaws, so every so often, it's not a bad idea to go back in, look at your bylaws, or maybe look at your charter to see if things should be changed or not. It sounds like uh, they were changed in 2016, um, but haven't been really touched since then. That's correct. I mean, okay. I think it's important to understand that um, the Home Rule Charter in of itself is a create, uh, creature of citizen uh, empowerment, right? Right. It was created by a group of citizens back in 1978, and that's the only way that it can be created is through citizen initiative. And similarly, it can only be amended through a uh, process involving the citizens of Pickin County. So it is a very, uh, while it's not designed necessarily to be changed on a regular basis, the sole way to change it is by involving the citizens of Pickin County. Uh, you know we all like to be involved. We do like yes, to be involved. Yes, we do. And I think that really is a wonderful thing that our citizens um, care and they're informed. Um, so I, I, um, I applaud the efforts of the county and the citizens group that is trying to get an amendment on the ballot, or they did get it onto the ballot. Um, Patty. If either of these measures passes, what are the steps to getting the charter changed? Um, and does that take place like right away? Um, or are there other things that need to happen? It's my understanding that if a vote goes through to amend the Home Rule Charter, it takes effect at that time. Okay. There's no other process, there's no time delay. Like at the state, sometimes state legislation, you, it takes effect like January 1st. This one kicks, kicks in right away. And I also want to go back and just clarify in 1978, prior to that, a committee was set up in 1974 to, cre to create the document itself. And it was it didn't pass the first time it went to the voters, so some language was added to allow the voters the opportunity to make amendments to the Home Rule Charter in the future. It passed on the second round in 1978. So it, it's in there to provide an avenue for the voters, the constituency, to bring forward changes in the Home Rule Charter. Changes in the past of the Home Rule Charter have been primarily not specific to issues like this one is, but specific to language that just needed to be cleaned up or those kind of small amendments or changes mm -hmm. that were brought to the voters at that time by staff who keeps an eye on the Home Rule Charter to make sure it's staying current and, and make sure that it's not overlapping anything else or con in conflict with anything else. So. Um, so this is the first step to put to the voters amendments and as you said correctly um, that's in ballot question um, 200 which is the petition question by the citizens and the county's question um, 1c just reaffirms what the voters have already given us the authority given us meaning the board of commissioners the authority to make decisions on so so that's where we're going to be we'll have to wait and see what the outcome of the election is on november 4th and then we'll see what our future brings us. <coughs> Can I jump off Patty's point a little bit? Let's riff. All right. Uh, I think uh, one good way to think about how the charter is structured is it generally provides a framework within which uh, to make decisions, meaning it generally lays out how to make a decision. It doesn't present a specific decision to be made, if you understand what I'm meaning. I am. <laughs> oh, good, we got her. We you got, got me. She understands. Um, uh, what I don't understand, though, is what's going to happen if both pass? So what if people say yes, yes? Sure, that's a favorite topic of conversation. I mean, we all like to sort of vision what that <laughs> sure. future is going to look like. Uh, I, I believe the short answer is, and I've said this to the BOCC before, is that if both pass, um, the county's question 1C controls uh, by design. It's okay. intended to um, the specific language of the uh, 
uh, text amendment to the Home Rule Charter uh, seeks to reaffirm the BOC's, uh, BOCC's authority over the airport and uh, places that authority on top of any provision in the code to the contrary. Or I'm sorry, not the code, the Home Rule Charter to okay. the contrary. Okay. So and part, part of that question for, for the county's question, it, it all interacts with what the citizens have been asking to do, which is to vote on the airport. Right, but why aren't we voting on the airport? So uh, that's the part where I think it's tripping up a lot of people in our community. The chamber sent out a survey to over a thousand members and we got a very robust reply back. And they said what's important to them at the airport um, isn't about the charter, it's really about safety and the reliability of service. And that's so inc um, incredibly important. I think not only to the business community, but also to the residents. So are either ballot initiatives actually talking about safety and talking about reliability of service? The county's question talks about the focal points of the visioning committee, which was put together, you know, years ago, 18 months of meetings um, total, yeah, 16 months and then another two, um, to come up with um, some recommendations to the BOCC, which the Board of Commissioners adopted um, to move it forward with safety and number one priority. Um, with reliability based on having a runway which can accommodate next generation aviation um, and gear up the infrastructure and modernization of the airport, which is badly in need of some tender loving care. Well, it is. For, um, like at a minimum, it is. Um, are uh, the citizens against the um, bigger planes and Chuck? Butler came in and chatted with me, and it sounds like we are all more aligned than we are not aligned. They want a better terminal. Uh, they want a lot of the same things that our community wanted. Um, so why, I still don't understand why we just aren't asking about the airport. So why did the county not just ask an airport question? Why did you ask a charter question as well? Well, that's a good question. And you, you're absolutely right. We are in much more in alignment than we are not in alignment. And so it's a, it's a quandary as to then what are we doing here? Right. And so the county, in hindsight, should probably have put on right away a ballot question asking, do you yeah. want an airport? Do you want one airport? Black and white. We didn't. And so then we heard that the um, Citizens Against Bigger Planes and some connection with Aspen Flyright, et cetera, were thinking about a question. So we waited to see what their question language would be and then responded. And that's what the county has done. And we're in, it's in response to um, the citizens petitioned question 200 on the ballot. Yeah, what I find interesting in our community is um, back in 2018, 2019, I was called upon to sit on the visioning committee with the airport, as were 130 other um, residents, um, business owners, uh, stakeholders. And I struggled, I'm not going to lie with you, because I was, on the character, I was on the community character committee. You are the community character. Uh, we had some characters, <laughs> including me. Um, and a lot of us, we were having a hard time finding like balance. But if you stayed with it and really heard what everybody was talking about, we did find alignment. So at the last minute to sort of say, hey, the citizens didn't get a point of view or were not heard, I struggle with that argument a little bit because I feel like everybody had an opportunity. I mean, in fact, that was so robust. We were like, what is the county doing? This is crazy, the amount of effort and work that went into that whole visioning process. Certainly COVID hit, that changed things a bit, but the county stayed dedicated to getting an updated ALP because it is better than the current one that we have on record. Can you just sort of tell me if it's all right, the what's better about the updated ALP, the one that we're trying to get the FAA to approve versus if they don't approve that, we're stuck with the old ALP and I don't think there's things in there that the community wants. Do you, do you know, can um, you speak to, to that? To be really brief, um, what are the, the positives that are coming out in the revised, the, the ALP that we've recently submitted for approval 
is all of the good things that the community came up with. Yeah. Things like multimodal transportation system. The key thing is all the environmental actions, how we can really green up the airport, the infrastructure improvements that will set us up for the next le level, next generation of, of aviation um, with electric electricity, um, space allotments, everything, all the positives that the community wanted, we move forward. And you're right, why did we choose, the county choose to open the process up again? It's because we heard from the community and we listened to what the community wanted and they wanted a voice in this. So we provided it with an, uh, out, I mean, an amazing amount of people that came forward, amazing amount of time and energy and homework that people did to participate in the revised ALP, which is waiting any day to hear back if it's being approved or not. But it is a much better, provides for a much better airport that's greener and cleaner and quieter. I do feel like that gets lost somewhere in there, like, oh, we submitted an ALP. Okay, great, that's wonderful. Airport layout plan, right? Because most people are like, what the heck's an and ALP? Let me further that. Yeah. An ALP is an airport layout plan, but it has to have allotment of space for every square inch of land within the airport ownership. So that means everything has to have something outlaid, outlaid in the layout plan that shows what the the possible intent of use for that parcel, you know, be it, you know, the parking lot or the, the everything that's within the confines yeah. of the airport. So I think what's getting lost is that the community came up with some amazing ideas for how to make that airport as uh, efficient, less dirty, uh, better with the terminal, and there were really great ideas that are now embedded into the updated ALP. So I do think that, and the membership would agree, along with the board of directors, that moving forward with this updated ALP is only a really good thing for our community. But we're not all in alignment, right? So Citizens Against Bigger Planes really do passionately feel about opening this back door like they don't the back door being the larger dirtier planes that people might fly in on the private side not on the commercial side do you have any comment is that is there any way to close the back door in a sense we so wish that, we could close a lot of doors but yeah. fa doesn't allow us to and even if we weren't to take fa funding we would still be not we would still not be allowed to close those doors right it's called discrimination and it's title 16 i believe I think you're thinking of a Part 16 Part complaint. Part 16. Complaint. Is how you, uh, the FAA would potentially enforce an uh, allegation that there's discrimination at the airport. It's happened to us before. Okay. It could happen to us again in the future. Okay. But you're right. But part of this is the fact that the community has had a lot of say in where we are today. And, um, and now we're at the voting booth. Well, and I think from a technical standpoint, the ALP that has been developed now better defines what the goals are that have come out of the community engagement process. Uh, a good example of that is on our previously approved ALP. There are areas out at the airfield that were limited, uh, I'm sorry, were labeled as something like general aviation use or something like that, which leaves a lot to the imagination, right? There's a lot of things that could fit, uh, fit under that heading. Those areas have now been specifically labeled with intended uses, like additional parking for locally based aircraft, things like that, um, that take some of that ambiguity out when you're talking about trying to backdoor something. If you have a specific use identified on the ALP, it really can only be utilized for that use. So you don't have something that you were not anticipating taking place out at the airport. So it, is a, it provides more certainty going forward utilizing that document. I see. Well, I do have to say that on a national level, things seem to be a little crazy. Uh, we were learning about some misinformation from the county uh, clerk. Um, we're really looking at all these issues. But what I'd like to say to our community is we have more in common than we have that separates us and that we don't have to fall for all the national tricks. You're my neighbor, you're my neighbor, I'm your neighbor. And I think that we can civilly talk about this and move the Aspen and Picking County communities, most especially the airport, 
uh, forward in a positive manner. I've been in my job for 25 years. I've been on almost every committee that has anything to do with the airport, and I don't think any of us have done anything to see industrial tourism come through, to see these words that people are throwing around. Um, we don't want that to happen. I think as a community, we really can work together through these public processes and get what we need. So I applaud you. I applaud the citizens as well. And I really do hope that we find a way to kind of thread the needle to make sure that we don't come out of November with a series of bruises and really a divide that will not let us work together. In the chamber, I always say we have rolling alliances, right? I might agree with the county on some things, but I'm very much against the county on some other things. It's how we behave with each other through these alliances um, that really uh, form character. So I'm just asking everybody in our community to know that each side is passionate. They really do want what's best. Um, and I hope our elected leaders will lead us through. So that's why we're supporting the county initiative and we're not supporting the citizens initiative. Um, but I have a lot of respect for everybody who really spends a lot of time um, in this issue. So thank you all for watching this episode of Aspen Affairs Election 2024, Informed and Empowered. I'm Debbie Braun, President of the Chamber. You can watch all these episodes and learn more. Check your voter registration at aspenchamber.org slash elections. Thank you, Grassroots TV. Thank you, John Masters. Uh, your support is always um, amazing. Until next time, stay informed and make your voice count. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much for joining Thank us. You. Thank you.